what I wanted to do is I wanted to just say uh, whenever I stand up in front of a group of people, I really try not to be egotistical because it turns me off whenever I see people that get real egotistical. So my prayer is always, can I say what you want to hear rather than what I have to say? Because what I have to say doesn't really matter. What you need to hear is much more important to me than what I have to say. And then uh, a credit to all teachers, because uh, sometimes people don't understand. Uh, teachers stand up in front of you, and really, <clears throat> they're kind of naked, <clears throat> because they're there in front of you giving of themselves, and they're exposing their vulnerability. So I really feel like good teachers are kind of like diamonds, and that is... The light that you have as you focus on me has to shine through me. So I really feel like good teachers are just there to reflect back on you something that you would have wisdom about. And good teachers to me, uh, my job is to light up your light. I mean, good teachers will tell you they don't teach because of the money. Uh, really... Uh, I like to see people smile. I like to see a student, you know, the first time you feel the edge of a muscle and you go, oh, trapezius really does exist, you know, <laughs> and you see them smile and they get excited. Well, that's what teachers, as far as I'm concerned, that's what teaching is all about. So what I wanted to share with you is a little bit about where I came from, <clears throat> uh, how did I get started, what I'm doing now, and then kind of a message that I feel like is important for the future of massage. And so uh, we all quote Einstein, but Einstein said, I didn't arrive at my understanding of fundamental laws of the universe through my rational mind. So everybody here, to me, massage is a very soulful thing, not a mindful thing. And you can have all the knowledge in the world. You can, know, you can know every name of every chemical function in a body. But that's not what your clients want. You know, they want a connection to be happening between you and them where they come into you for whatever reason. It could be they're stressed. It could be they're in pain. For whatever reason, and all they're looking for is quality time with another human being that can do something for them that will enhance their life. So my message is trying to do something tonight that when you watch clips, you'll consider them. And in the end, I, I want to do like a summary of why I showed you the clips so you'll get an idea of what's happening. But um, I am an owner of uh, a massage school in the Central Florida area of uh, Florida, Central Florida School of Massage. I've owned it for about 19 years. Um, I'm a CEU provider. I started in the 90s. I have a sports internship program. Uh, my specialty, I call it sports and pain management. I used to just call it sports, but every time you work on an athlete, there's a, they're, they're always in pain someplace. So if you don't know how to deal with pain, uh, you really need to do that in, in terms of being a sports therapist. So. Um, I was the president of the FSMTA. FSMTA is the second oldest massage therapy association in the United States, one of the largest in the country. We used to argue we were first, but it turns out Ohio is the oldest massage therapy, or <coughs> oldest licensed massage therapy state. And uh, the New York Society of Medical Massage Therapists is actually the oldest association in the country. But <laughs> and we do, a, we do a great job of representing the state of Florida. I've been an expert witness many times in court, and uh, I've been at the Atlanta, I was at the Atlanta Olympic Games for 16 days straight. So this is me <laughs> in 1975. It was my first uh, experience of any kind of work done to me. And so uh, I signed up for the 10 sessions of rolfing. 
The uh, Rolfer was doing his master's thesis on humanistic psychology. And so what he had me do is take a psychological test, and then I drew a picture of me as I related to me, and then he did the 10 sessions of Rolfing. And then we retook the psychological test, and then we redrew the picture of ourselves. So what, what he was basically trying to say is, how does physical body work change the psyche of a human being? And that year we went to San Francisco and he presented his master thesis uh, at the uh, Rolfing uh, convention to Ida Rolf. So that's 1975. So if you think uh, that's 40 years ago that my, my first uh, ever letting someone work on me. The Rolfing thing says, well, structure and function are intertwined. So if you don't have good structure, you can't have good function. If you don't have good function, you won't have good structure. So it made a lot of sense to me. Back then, uh, I did air conditioning and heating for 12 years. So I, I got out of air conditioning and heating and went into massage therapy. And people go, how did you make that transition? And I go. Right. Well, air conditioning and heating actually helped me because uh, if someone called you to their house and said, my air conditioning system's not working, what do you have to do? You have to do a quote unquote diagnosis of the system. So when I went to massage school, I was already used to understanding there are systems in the body and these are signs that something in those systems is not working. So it related really well to massage. But I went to the Florida School of Massage Therapy in Gainesville, Florida in 1984. My big thing to tell you is, is before I ever went to massage school, I had done meditation and I had been a vegetarian. And so when I went to look for a massage school, I really wasn't looking for a medical institute. I was really looking for a holistic place to go to school. And at that time, the Gainesville School was a very holistic approach to massage therapy. And I've always kept that as very important to me. My school now is kind of a reflection of uh, what my uh, training was back in 1984. Uh, I like the holistic nature. Today, why do people come to you? Because you're medical practitioners or because you are providing a service in a way that is a very caring thing to be doing with them that goes way beyond a lot of medical treatments. So to me, I'm, not, I'm totally open to all medical people because Jim mentions cancer. If there weren't some pretty smart people around, he probably wouldn't be here right now. So I, I want to be all inclusive not say that uh, one part of massage is better than another, because I really don't believe that. I believe what you're doing matters, and what matters is you're doing what you believe in more than anything else. <clears throat> so I, I don't know whether you know this guy, Mr. Benny Vaughn. He, he was, I went to school January 4th, 1984. I was in Benny's workshop January 30th. <clears throat> so I didn't even know what effleurage was back then. But I knew Benny, Benny had said, I'm going to come and do this sports massage workshop at, at the school. And I told them, um, I was raised in Florida, so every day after school when I got home, I played baseball, basketball, and football. So sports was who, I mean, I learned how to relate to people through sports. And so when they said, well, there's this type of massage you can direct towards athletes, I said, I know what I'm doing. So I've been studying sports massage for 31 years now. And Benny was uh, the, he became the, uh, the medical services director for the Atlanta Olympic Games. And his job was to pick all of the medical staff for 32 venues at, at the uh, Olympics in Atlanta. So I started a sports internship. Uh, I take people now uh, that want to know about sports massage. And we actually go into a university. The University of Central Florida is in Orlando. So I take people that want to know more about sports massage into the athletic training room. And we actually work on athletes. And one of the things that's really nice about that is, you know, we're here right now. 
and someone could offer a presentation on how to work on a sprained ankle. But if you're here and nobody has a sprained ankle, you have to pretend like you're working. In the athletic training room, we're not pretending. Those people are coming there. They have every condition that you can think of. And so now massage therapists are going from an education where they just worked on each other in their school to an education where they're working with other medical professionals in an environment where people have pain and suffering and are working out a lot. So it's a wonderful way of doing it. It's 11 weeks of uh, doing sports massage. This is the Atlanta Olympic Games. And to give you history, um, this was the first time ever that massage was included in the medical director services. And it was really, as far as I'm concerned, it was because of Benny Vaughn. I, I would give Benny uh, much more credit if you don't know who he is, he's just an excellent professional. He's an athletic trainer, but you ask him what he does, and he'll say, I'm a massage therapist. And I don't know too many people that have a higher degree that will say, I'm a massage therapist, and that's the way he works. So it was probably because of him that I worked in the Olympic Village for 16 days straight on athletes all over the world. But I want to tell you, they didn't really want us to be there. And when we got there, there was no oil. There was no draping. There was nothing. And uh, they really were trying to burn us out. <laughs> uh, at the last minute, they cut down the number of people that were working in the village in half. So we had half the staff, we thought. And their idea was that every athlete that came in the Olympic Village, they said, do you want a massage? Because they wanted to get us so that, I, I mean, I don't know what you feel like after you've done about 14 massages on real big athletes, but the idea was to burn us out. And um, I remember some, I, w I was working one day and I went upstairs to eat and literally I was so achy, sore that I was about ready to cry. But I said to myself, I will die before I leave this training room. I will never let them say that massage therapists aren't serious about what we're doing and that we're providing a good service. <clears throat> Well, all of a sudden, a TV shows up, and now we see what's going around in the Olympics. Oil shows up, lotion shows up, and the, the athletic trainers and the PTs and all the people that worked in the Olympic Village saw how hard we were working, and they said, we wouldn't want to do that. <laughs> so a lot of people, like Iris mentioned, there's a lot of people that came before me that have done a lot of things for this profession. And they will continue to happen, but my message to you is this is the best time that there's ever been to be a massage therapist. We have more knowledge, we have more jobs, we have more credentials, we have just, this is a great time to be a massage therapist as far as I'm concerned. So I now own a school, uh, the Central Florida School of Massage. That's where I practice and I teach and all that. And this is our mission. When, when you have a school, it's good to have a mission statement. But if you notice, it says the Central Florida School of Massage Therapy, uh, its faculty and staff provide comprehensive education in the art and science of massage therapy, balancing professional experience with personal growth in a supportive environment. So I always want to say massage is an art and it is a science. So I, there's no argument to me that it should be both. Great science, great art. But what I really want to encourage you is to use massage as a medium for your own personal growth. If you aren't growing, I always tell people, how can I help somebody else when I haven't faced that same situation and gone through it? Because then you're just pretending, you're acting out. But when you develop yourself personally, spiritually, mentally, and emotionally, now you have much more to offer people. And that, that's what I call being real as a massage therapist. So one of my philosophies is that what, what is the, I ask inner, when I have a student come into my school, I say, what do you think the most important reason is for a human being to get massaged? Now, if I ask everybody in this audience, you can probably give me a bunch of different reasons. But for me, 
It is awareness. What do you do when you lay on a massage table? You are allowing another human being to put pressure on your body. And when they put pressure on your body, you can't help but follow their hands. So what really happens for human beings is massage increases their own awareness of how they're doing in the body they're living in. And that's probably the most important reason why I'm a massage therapist is to help other human beings become more aware. Now, if you look at the way our society is, if I was yelling and screaming at you, everybody has a tendency of holding, if you get yelled at, and you're t you hold your breath, and then you tense your body. So for me, when I do a massage, the thing I tell people is all I really want you to do is breathe and let go. When I'm working on you, I'm trying to figure out in your body where you're holding stress and tension and pain. And if you're too tense and you don't trust me, you're not going to really enjoy the experience. So I feel like one of the lessons in life, not just on a massage table, but all of your life everywhere you go is, do you have the capability of letting go? Because it's control. When you try and control your spouse, your dog, it really doesn't work very well that you try and control things. But when you have the courage to let go and let things be, you take the weight of stress off your body. So that's my big philosophy. So the message to me is we're hardwired for it to be empathetic towards each other. That's an amazing thing for me. So when you ask yourself, why are you a massage therapist? It's because you're hardwired to be one. But we don't have the connection. So what I try and encourage people to think about is, why do we have to wait for a disaster to happen to be empathetic? You can choose to be empathetic any day doing random acts of kindness to people around you. The world can change if we make it change. But it has to be, what is our priority? So you'll see kindness to me, compassion, kindness, caring. That's what massage therapy is all about. The money that you make, they always say if you want to be happy, do things you love to do. The money that you make is a side effect of delivering kindness, ca uh, compassion, and caring. So. In the world of massage therapy, we always have these people that are all really pro-medical, wanting to do everything medical. They want research. They want there. And I listen to them talk sometimes, and they go, they say, but there's no research about that energy stuff. And I go, is that really true that there's not, or you just don't want to look for it? And see, to me, like, here's a little Petri dish of yogurt and a guy is thinking anxious thoughts, and the yogurt changes. So I go, like, how, what, do, what message are you sending out every day? Like, are you sending out messages to your clients that you are a competent, caring person? And what energy goes into that relationship? So you got to remember that your clients are coming to you because they're hurting. And they're emanating energy. And people say, well, energy doesn't exist. I go, I can tell. Like, can you tell when your clients are really happy? Can you tell when they're really sad? Can you tell? All massage therapists, you can look at a client and you, and then we not only do we have to recognize their energy state, but we have to adapt to it. If someone's really sad and depressed, you don't start laughing and telling them jokes, right? You have, to, you have to adapt to them. And that's what a good therapist does is you're compassionate, you're caring, you have a human being that comes to you and they're presenting in a certain way and you're trying to match that and take them to a better place. So my thing is anybody that says you don't have an aura, you don't have an en energy, I go, well, I don't think you're really looking at the evidence because the evidence is there that it's there. The two, the two people were asked to meditate and just agree that they would work with each other. Then they were separated and they were put in rooms where no electrical magnetic energy could 
go through the room and one was shown flashes of light and they registered the electrical impulse on that person's brain in that room. But the other person was in another room, not connected, no conversation, and when those electrical impulses showed up on the one person's brain, the person in the other room who hadn't seen the light had the almost similar brain pattern. So what that tells me is we've all been told we are all one. But see, science is starting to say, hey, wait a minute. If you agree to work with somebody else on a deep level, you don't even need to talk to them. There is a deep, non-local connection that happens between human beings. And that's what I think massage therapists really need to understand. If we agree to work together, <clears throat> uh, it is amazing what we will get done. So when you look at politics today, <laughs> you see that there's a big disparity about a few people are coming away with way too much money. <coughs> and this is that message that something bad starts to happen when society gets too far out of balance. So I feel like in the message of massage therapy is like, take what you need, but don't be a hoarder. Don't take more than you really need because ultimately it'll affect the whole profession. And that's what's happening today. So I feel like I want to make sure that I'm part of the solution and not part of the problem. So again, I say uh, we can change and we can change very powerfully, but if we're not if we don't know what we're intending, we'll never get there. And so coming to places like this and having an opportunity to share information with each other and really define what is a massage therapist, what's the scope of practice of a massage therapist, what are modalities that work and don't work. Uh, when we get clear and we're passionate about what we're doing and we agree to unite, then I, I really feel like we're unstoppable. So I put, when massage therapists stop fighting amongst themselves, do you ever experience that? No. No. When we stop fighting amongst ourselves, we develop our compassion. Remember, we're compassionate. We're hardwired to be compassionate. When we're compassionate, we get clear about the intention that we're trying to create in the world and for our clients that we stop being competitive and start being more cooperative, then uh, we develop our own personal power. Remember the power of one, whether it's Mother Teresa or that guy standing in front of a tank. You are powerful. You just gotta, you gotta let your power come through. And when you do that, you'll, you'll have a big impact on the world. And uh, our profession really will if we can do that, agree to work with each other, be compassionate, have clear intention, then we will be expressing love. Because love isn't like, you know, some people don't like to hear the word love because they think it's too woo-woo, right? But real love is not woo-woo at all. So when I'm being a real person standing up in front of you, and I deliver a message that says we're unstoppable, then to me, <laughs> I just want you to know that to start off this, this whole thing, I can't think of a better message than to say we need to practice loving each other. So, thank you.